Today, I'm super excited because we are gonna start our gratitude bowl. This is a pinch pot that you will form with your hands out of clay, and then I've provided a list of words, and you're gonna make little cards that say different things in your life that you might be grateful for. Click the link below to download the printable gratitude word list. The cool thing about air dry clay is that we can actually press little objects into it before it's dry. I'm gonna teach you how to do this in a minute, but first I wanna talk about gratitude. Some other words for gratitude are fortunate, lucky, or thankful. So when we are feeling grateful or thankful for something, we are feeling the emotion of gratitude and it is a big positive emotion. It does wonders for our brain and for our heart. It actually makes us feel good because gratitude leads to other happy emotions like being happy or feeling calm and peaceful or feeling love. And those are really important things for us to feel in our life because they also balance out the hard stuff. There are gonna be days when we feel sad. The other cool thing about gratitude is it leads to better relationships with other people. So when we are specifically grateful for somebody, like our parents or our siblings or a friend or a teacher, anybody in your life, that's gonna help you build trust. And when you express that gratitude to them, when you say, I am thankful for you in my life, that builds a really deep connection and brings you closer together. Let's learn how to use this fun little gratitude bowl. I close my eyes, I take a deep breath and I just pause. And I'm gonna just think about what should I be reminded of in this moment? What's something that I might need to remember to be grateful for? And I'm gonna pick Oops, I picked my cat, and the funny thing is I don't have a cat. So when you do this, only put the words that apply to you. I'm gonna pick a card, and it says, my friends. Let's see if I can show that to you. It says, my friends, and yes, I'm so thankful for my friends. I'm so grateful for my friends. That is a wonderful thing for me to think about today. So let's jump into the video and learn how to shape the bowl. Today I'll be using Crayola Air Dry Clay, a variety of acrylic paint. I have a flat brush ready with water, paper towel, and a paper plate, and several different ideas for things that I can press into my bowl. We are going to use a large chunk of clay today. You want your chunk to be larger than one palm, but not too big to hold with both hands. Think of shaping a snowball. Make sure the rest of your clay is airtight so it doesn't dry out when you're not working with it. I like to have a moist rag handy to wipe my hands when I need to. I like to squeeze and squish my clay just a little bit before making my art. You don't want to play with it too much because your hands can draw out all the moisture and then it will be dry. You want to keep it flexible. Let's go ahead and start shaping our ball. I'm rolling the ball in circles on the table, but I'm also using both hands to shape it. Now my hands are bigger than yours, and you can see it takes two hands to hold this ball. That gives you a good idea of how much clay to use. The clay is resting on both hands and my thumbs are facing each other and centered in the middle of the ball. I press my thumbs in with even pressure, and then I rotate my ball a little bit. Squeeze your thumb towards your other fingers like a duck bill closing. The idea is to squeeze your fingers and then spin your bowl. So you're going to constantly be squeezing and spinning. Pay attention to how thin the bottom of your bowl is getting and also the sides. Don't rush this process. You want to keep an eye on all the sides of your bowl. I usually start shaping my bowl in the air and then I start pressing it flat on the table. You don't want the bottom to get too thin, nor do you want your sides to get too thin. Your fingers are your tools. Play around with the pressure of pinching and squeezing and keep an eye on the sides and bottom of the bowl. You're the boss of your clay, so bend it into whatever shape you want. The thickness of your bowl should be a little less than the width of your finger. 
If it's too thin, it will be too fragile and could break easily. Now that my bowl is in the shape that I want, I'm going to smooth out all the little rough edges and cracks with the water. I call this a one finger dip. I dip my index finger, also known as the pointer finger, into the water and I rub it back and forth along all those cracks. Notice how the clay feels under your fingers. It gets slippery when it's wet and very smooth. Too much water will work against you when it's time to paint, so stick with that one finger dip. All you need is a tiny bit of water to smooth those little cracks. Clay is constantly moving until it's dry, so you may have to adjust the edges of your bowl after you smooth your cracks. Using a paper plate with acrylic paint helps with cleanup. You can either throw it away when you're done or let it dry and save it and use it again. You also avoid putting acrylic paint down your drain. When it comes to painting your bowl, choose colors that you love. There's so much freedom here, you get to design the pattern as well. If you're not sure what to do, choose two colors, one for the inside of the bowl and one for the outside of the bowl. You might be wondering why we're painting the clay while it's still moist instead of letting it dry. Well, the answer is simple. Because I'll be pressing objects into the soft clay, I need to paint first because it would be really difficult to paint around all the little beads and sequins. I've decided to do three colors on the inside, making concentric circles, and one color on the outside. Okay, now I'm going to show you how I decorate and embellish the bowl. I'm going to cut apart this Mardi Gras necklace so that they're individual little shiny balls. These are great for making patterns and designs in the clay. You might wonder how deep you need to press your objects in. I say, get them stuck in the mud. If you have a collection and a variety of small shiny things, use them. I put a button in the center, cut up Mardi Gras necklace, and I'm going to add beads in a second. Pressing small objects into the clay is optional. You could also do this project with just clay and paint. I'm finished with the inside, so I'm going to carefully flip the bowl over. The outside of the bowl is going to be one color. Make sure to get all the different sides of the bowl. When you finish painting the outside of your bowl, you're going to do two things. First, you're going to wash your brush. You never want it to dry with acrylic paint on it. That would ruin it. And then you're going to let the paint dry on your bowl before you flip it. Once it's dry on the outside, you can turn it over. If some paint pulled off the rim of your bowl when it was upside down on the paper, you can touch it up. The last step is to move the clay bowl to a piece of cardboard. You want this to dry for several days in a warm, dry place. I love making pinch pots. The part two of this video is really short. I'm gonna show you the optional step of adding a shiny coat of Mod Podge that seals in all your little fancy additions. So if you used beads or buttons or sequins of any kind, it is a good idea to use the Mod Podge. It also makes the color a little more vibrant and bright. So if you have it around, go ahead and use it. And in that part two video, I also show you how we're gonna add some color to the cards and cut them up so that they're ready to use.